Uh, mood disorders, everybody on this screen? Everybody on that screen? And I could have put a whole lot more. Deal with the mood disorder. You know most of them, some are uh, artists, politicians, musicians, actresses, and others. They all deal with mood disorders. What kind of mood disorder? What's a mood disorder? What's it sound like? A mood disorder, you probably know of, when you call it things like, yeah, depression, anything that messes with or changes our moods, our emotions. Primarily, the mood of sadness, what we call depression, and in weird, odd cases, not as, no, not as common when it's a happy or excited mood called mania, which is the basic for manic depression, polar opposites. So it's bipolar, polar opposites, manic depression, and people that have manic depression go like that. They swing between manic and depression, but it's way more common for people just to suffer with depression. That's a mood disorder. So that's bipolar versus unipolar. Bipolar, the highs of manic versus the lows of depression. Questions that you have or heard, things you know about depression, things you want to hear about or know or? Are manic depression and bipolar the same thing? Uh-huh, manic depression and bipolar are the exact same thing for the most part. Bipolar, two poles, manic and depression. Unipolar, we don't call it that, but that's a single pole and it, usually it's depression. Most people, there, I, there are very few, if I don't, I don't really know of any cases in which a person is unipolar at the manic phase, only manic. It's almost always associated with the depression eventually. Personality disorders be mood disorders. Yeah, um, there are like things like multiple personality, y'all. They, they, um, they're so rare that we're. I'm going to spend time on these because they're much more common. And the symptoms I, you guys know about. I mean, when you talk about mood, we all understand the symptoms. When it comes to, and so it's fairly common. As high as 25 percent, 20 percent of the population at some time can suffer from depression. Multiple personalities, the answer is ready. It is, it's rare. They're, it's just not common, and so most people don't run into it. So we're not gonna spend as much, and it is different. There are some other cool ones, like there was this, uh, there are disorders, y'all, you know, that, that um, are, are like dissociative disorders. There was a boy, ready? Four years old. You probably know the story. He's four years old with his twin brother, fraternal twin. They're swimming in, in a very, in a backyard like little wading pool that was in a very poor part of the country <clears throat> and uh, so it was like a little water hole and they're just swimming in it and one of the kids when the mom turns away falls hits his head get lands in the water and the other boy doesn't know what to do he he just panics and freezes and his brother is drowning and he doesn't know what to do it just freaks him out just stands there the mom had turned away only only briefly by the time the mom turns back and a, a neighbor happened to see the same thing th it was basically too late they run out there and try and save him uh, the boy dies the surviving twin freaked out as you might imagine he had had some earlier kind of issues but they got worse and in fact from that point forward this little boy his, his name was Raymond his little Raymond never again saw normally in fact he lost his sight completely at that point over the next couple of weeks and months and it was almost as if he was so traumatized like I don't want to see this like shutting it out and he became functionally and effectively blind uh, and never saw again. Now little Raymond grew up to be a well-known artist named Ray Charles. It's the story of Ray Charles. Ray, there was a movie made about him <laughs> recently. Ray Charles had a, had a dis psychological disorder that manifested itself in its, his body, ready? The psychological was so powerful, so strong, the brain didn't know what to do, and in this case it just said, ah, and it turned off his eyesight. Those are disorders, and by the way, that was so long ago, and, 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 and he didn't get the proper treatment at the time, there is better ways of treating individuals like that today, but he, he didn't get that. Those are, but those are 
more rare. They're interesting, they're in your textbook. I want you to look at those things, read them. Some, this is, used to be called a somatoform disorder, something called dissociative disorder, like fugue, or uh, other, well, a lot of different names of different things. So amnesia and, and ways the brain kind of tries to take care of itself in, in traumatic situations. This, these, manic depression and depression, are much more common. By the way, so here's the, you don't, there's nothing to write here, it just goes like this, it just goes up and down, where, so like this, there's manic, here's normal, here's depressed, and they just go, like this might be in the course of a year, you might have somebody over a week or two, and then they might fall down into deep depression, and then they go live in this kind of, in, in normal existence for a while, and then, so, so you'll see that where, where someone with depression, they're, they're not going up here, this is, this is a depressive disorder, they're normal for a while, and then they just live in this state of depression. You and I and, and, and all can vary at times like this. Some of us can spend a little bit of time here or maybe more just like this. Uh, and it just simply, some, you know, we, we, it varies over time, but this one is deeper depression, while this one, again, is someone that might have what's called bipolar one disorder, okay? So, um, in that, uh, let me show you someone in the manic phase that's up in that kind of antsy, uh, kind of almost too, uh, too energetic phase, if you want. Um, I think her name is Mary. At the opposite end of the spectrum from being depressed. They are unusually cheerful, unusually optimistic. They can become euphoric. They can become so excited about the uh, possibilities in themselves, in their world, that nothing seems impossible. And so they will be extremely talkative, physically active. It's sometimes impossible to interrupt a manic in a, in a talk, they, they have what we will call a push of speech. Meaning so here's Mary, and I want you to read about... It is almost impossible and sometimes impossible to interrupt. You may have to sort of really tap the patient several times, say, please stop for a minute. Let me try to ask you something else, and they may not be able to stop. This what is are your ambitions in life? You mean my goals? Yes. I call them goals, you call them ambitions. See, we, we are two different people. I know what you think, I can reach a man. I can reach a man right now, I'm gonna reach a man. Go ahead. Y'all probably saying, oh, she anxious to be on TV, which I am. I I'm happy because I'm on TV. I, I always wanted to be on TV on, on Channel 9. No, Channel 11, because I wake up in the morning, I take them over to school, I always had this program about Speak Up America. Yeah. And I said, oh, man, I'm going to write there. I can do that. What, I want to. Uh, mood disorders are uh, fairly uh, common, um, not only in this country, but in, uh, throughout the world we find uh, very similar kinds of rates. There are some uh, l places that have less um, uh, numbers or smaller numbers of their population struggling or suffering from mood disorders. Um, but on the whole, uh, this seems to strike broadly the human condition. It's very close to us just simply experiencing uh, changes in our mood um, but a mood disorder takes it to another degree, another level, another level of severity, another level of intensity, and even duration of symptoms. So, um, for the most part with mood disorders, uh, you're looking at an onset, unlike schizophrenia, which seems to happen early in uh, adult years, in fact, in teen, teen to adult years, uh, mood disorders tend to be a, a little bit later on, around 30 years of age is the median. So um, this is a fairly large group of people. Uh, you could say, I, I don't know what 21 million, but it's probably somewhere around 9, 10% of the adult population in this country a annually um, will this occur. Uh, all right, so what we wanna do is spend just a minute making sure you understand the differences. We've talked about bipolar uh, or disorders, and, and I, I mentioned that being manic and depressive uh, disorders combined, and, and now we're going to switch from that to just simply 
uh, the area of depression. Individuals that suffer from depression, I could put up many faces, obviously with 21 million Americans, it's going to strike across um, the board uh, at almost every level of society and um, even in, far, even in, in children, just because the median age is 30 does not mean that children are not influenced or affected by, by depression. So um, it, it becomes literally the, what they call the common cold of psychological disorders. Not because it's easy to cure or get rid of like the common cold would be if you just wait around a few days, it tends to get better. No, instead what that means is among all the psychological disorders, this is the one that more people are prone to or susceptible to or something of a psychological disorder. And what that ends up meaning is that there are simply suffering from depression around 15 million US adults. So of the 20 or so that were um, suffering from a mood disorder generally, a good percentage in the vast majority of those are suffering from depression, about 15 million. And what ends up happening with mood disorders uh, from a psychological standpoint is this uh, very deep um, and, and fairly comprehensive overtaking of the person's mood. And so you have people who um, uh, begin to experience symptoms um, uh, and uh, that we understand, uh, for those who don't suffer from depression, we understand what sadness is. Most of you can list the, the symptoms of depression. They're similar symptoms to what we all feel. The difference, as I mentioned before, is going to be in the duration of the symptoms and how long and how severe and how intense they are. So it strikes more women, by the way, than men. Um, there are at least uh, indications that more women get diagnosed with depression uh, than men do. But there's some ideas out there that maybe it strikes men and women major depression equally, but that women get diagnosed more regularly or frequently because they tend to show up in doctor's offices. Uh, it may be that men are not going in and getting help or treatment. In fact, that's probably why men suffer from alcohol use at a much higher rate than women do, and it may be because of self-medication. That is, men are not going in, and then instead they're trying other ways or other things, and they're suffering from other disorders. All right, so co comorbidity, so suffering from uh, not only depression at the same time, but maybe alcohol, uh, alcoholism or um, some things that could be brought together like depression and even anxiety could influence numbers. So in general, women tend to get, again, uh, diagnosed more often, though the numbers aren't quite as disparate as this, they're probably closer together. So let's talk about major depression and then I'm gonna show you a picture of it because I've had people ask, you know, when do you have, when do you know this is something that's a disorder? When does sadness become, uh, you know, a deeper disorder? I told you about, you know, when I was sad, when I would leave, uh, you know, when we were engaged and I, and I lived in Colorado and my wife lived in Texas, it would be very hard to leave and I would be sad for a few days. But there is a very big difference between a person who experiences sadness that's pretty regular um, or, or what uh, on a normal level versus overwhelming sadness or feelings of worthlessness or guilt or suicidal thoughts. And your textbook does a good job of showing all of these different symptoms um, that, that uh, a person with major depressive disorder would feel. So what I'd like to do is show you a person, much like when we talked about uh, someone with obsessive compulsive disorder, and many of us have odd little quirks or weird little things we might do, and then you saw the lady in the video, if you were here, and you saw her experiencing uh, need, the need to wash her hands and to watch her baby and to set up traps in case somebody came in, and her obsessiveness is at such a higher level of a greater um, intensity. And that's the same thing with major depressive disorder. Here's Mary. Mary uh, is uh, indeed suffering from a major depressive disorder. And so you, you'll be able to see in her 
these kinds of symptoms to a strong degree. I understand something unusual happened on Thanksgiving. You went home for Thanksgiving. What happened? I couldn't feel anything. And? And my son and I were in my bedroom, in my son's bedroom, and I realized that I was the devil. You did what? I realized I was the devil. Can you tell me about that? When you say you were the devil, did you feel something unusual? Like I couldn't get back. Couldn't get back to where? Back from where? From everything I thought I loved. When I realized I probably didn't love anything ever. One of the unfortunate features of the word depression is it refers both to a normal experience of everyday life and to a disease. And the differences are several. First, the disease occurs as a syndrome. That means that there are a lot of other symptoms that go along with it. In addition, the sadness, the blueness, the melancholy of depression has an interesting specific quality. People who are to have the depressive illness will not experience pleasure. They will lose interest in things. Life is gray and boring and dull and weary, which is very different from the pangs of grief. In addition, people have other psychological symptoms and physiological ones as well. Do you feel sad or unhappy? I feel nothing. Do you feel happy? The doctors think that you want to die. Is that true? I want to die. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Have you told this to your husband? Yeah. What does he think about it? He thinks I'm kidding. Why do you want to die? Because I'm the devil. What does it mean to be the devil? It just means being really evil. Have you done something wrong? I never laughed. I never loved. I never forgave. In your whole life, you never laughed? Or yeah, loved? I did laugh. I thought I loved. But you don't feel that way now. Okay, so you could see clearly there is a, a level of severity here that's much different. She. Um, I'll show you, uh, we're going to have a follow-up, both with the girl with, that had obsessive compulsive disorder, I'm going to show you her uh, with therapy, and with Mary. With depression like this, you could see it very clearly, it's different than normal sadness, okay? Normal sadness is something we all experience at different times. In between normal sadness is this kind of chronic if you want mild depression, dysthemic disorder, Mary is certainly on the side of major depression. It's a major depressive episode. You can see it in her body, you can see it in her language, the way she talks, the way she uh, sees the world, the way she sees herself, she's evil, whatever she, however she's seeing that. And there are, uh, coming with that, this overwhelming worthlessness, feelings of guilt, and then almost this drive uh, towards suicidal thinking. So the difference between these are all just a matter of scale and people fall in different categories. Now in order to have dysthemic disorder, you're going to have to have symptoms of chronic mild depression for at least two years as an adult. How long would you have symptoms like Mary's before we would say you uh, meet the criteria for a diagnosis of major depression. It, it, one more time, if, if you have a dysthemic disorder, that is chronic mild depression, you have to have those symptoms. If you're a young person for about a year, if you're an adult, again, that's why it's called chronic and mild, it's for about two years. For Mary, the symptoms like you, what you saw up there, deep, deep feelings like that, if it lasts longer than two weeks, okay? I, about two weeks or so, you'll begin to meet 
the criteria for major depression. And um, for many people who experience sadness, it, it maybe lasts for a couple of days, maybe a week or so, um, and, and then it tends to go away. But you can see with Mary, that probably isn't going to go away. So that just establishes where we're at with th this difference between, you know, on one side, the normal sadness, and then at the extreme, major depressive disorder. All right, any questions that this is pretty well clear, uh, defined and, and discussed, and, and you understand most of this from the text. Any questions about depression or things you wonder about or have heard about, uh, things that maybe aren't clear? Yeah, there's the, uh, there is a little bit of uh, spiritual um, uh, questions that people have, and, and one of those is, you know, I covered last time, it's the same kind of thing in there uh, when, when we look at differences between what's, what, what could very well be psychological, what could very well, in fact, there are different ways to explain it. Um, and so one way, you know, that people try and explain depression, um, her question was specifically about the spiritual component of this. And so look back at your notes last time, which I covered a little bit of that. When it comes to depression, there's things that people would say, well, some of the key variables are, well, people just have pressures in life. And, and that seems to explain it. The more pressures like family and personal or financial difficulties or academic pressures, what we call that is it just, you simply have increased your risk for depression. So, that, so as pressures increase, that would be a key variable. But another one is actually where we live. There's what we call seasonal affective disorder rates, that is rates of something called SAD, seasonal affective disorder, that vary depending upon um, what seems to be sunshine. So in the south you'll find very few people have something called seasonal affective disorder, depression that comes only during the winter months. Down in states like where we're at in Southern California or in Florida, but up in the higher latitudes um, you could find you know higher rates of this. So in Alaska for example you might have as many as 10 percent of the population dealing with seasonal affective disorder. So that could possibly explain some depression. Others, is, another explanation or variable that comes into play is genetics. And when you have twins um, suffering from bipolar disorder, uh, the, the, what we call concordance rate is about 80.8 uh, uh, with uh, bipolar disorder um, and somewhere around 0.65 for any mood disorder. So you could tell there is some definite genetic component. All right, to depression. And then there might be other ways, for example, the way another kind of attempt to explain depression could very well be not only where we live, genetics, or even the pressures of life. Um, you don't have to know the numbers for genetics. It's just an example of how we explore this. Another one is how we think. And some have been looking at different ways that people who suffer from depression, how they're thinking gets thrown off a little bit. More negative perceptions, more self-defeating -de beliefs. And um, these could very well influence or make stronger these feelings of depression. So the symptoms can get worse and then now people begin to have self-defeating beliefs uh, and these perceptions start to feed off of each other. And now people are more prone than to these symptoms lasting longer. So somebody from a cognitive learning perspective would say, well, one explanation for depression is that we don't evaluate things correctly or we see it wrong or we focus on mistakes and not successes when someone's depressed or they might compare themselves unfavorably with other people. So just as some examples um, of the way in which some negative thinking or negative beliefs come into play with this disorder. All right. Depression, bottom line, widespread, the most common of the mood disorders. Um, that's like what, one in nine maybe Americans at any given time suffering from uh, depression. So it's very common, very widespread. And, um, and oftentimes it does, doesn't go diagnosed because people don't show up. They try and take care of it themselves. 
Um, I'm going to show you a little bit about how we treat these things. We're going to switch over to therapy real quick and talk a little bit about what would we do with somebody like Mary who shows up and how psychology and, and clinical psychology and even the field of psychiatry works with somebody like Mary. Um, are there any questions though about, about depression and, yep. Yeah. I don't know, something like that, and a psychiatrist like, prescribes them like, antidepressants. Yeah. Does that count as, like, are they diagnosed as depressed now? Uh, that's a good question. So there are some times when a person experiences a, a, a trauma in life, something happens, that triggers uh, some sort of, uh, you know, what could be diagnosed as maybe an extreme sadness or and then they, they take an antidepressant. Yeah, what it is, it's a type of, and so I'm giving you the broadest category of what depression would be, um, but there are specific subsets. So, so depression in, induced by, let's say, a traumatic event could be treated that way for a little while, and then the treatment might go away as the person, you know, um, uh, starts to get over, let's say, whatever the trauma was, or a grief process starts to play out. And, uh, but that, that's not uncommon. And it's just, it, it, it would be another way uh, and another type of depression that's caused by something like an event like that, yeah. Um, how come <clears throat> some people with depression feel like physical aches and pain? Yeah, there are physical symptoms that come along with depression. And so you might have somebody that you know that su suffers or struggles with this and they're going to report very commonly they'll report things like a f like physical like they just don't want to get out of bed but they also hurt or ache and um, some of that is it, it seems to be again part of the combination of the physical that's being influenced by the psychological so th it is fairly common to have physical symptoms associated with these things as well and why the, you know again there's a lot of unknowns and uncertainties, but, but that's, it's, just, it's just part of this and not that uncommon. Biola University offers a variety of biblically-centered degree programs, ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Visit biola.edu to find out how Biola could make a difference in your life.